This is the first video about sulfur, sulfur oxides. So as you know, sulfur oxide is one of the major air pollutants. So in this series, uh, I want to talk about sulfur oxides, the importance of it, and how they produced, how we can control them, how we can release the emission of sulfur oxide. So let's start. So what are sulfur oxides? Sulfur oxides are caused by burning sulfur or any material containing sulfur. So if you have any material that consists of sulfur, can be from 1%, less than 1%, or more than 1% sulfur content, if you burn them, or it means that if we combust them, or if we oxidize them, it means that we have the reaction between that material and oxygen. So when we have burning or combusting or oxidation, we will produce sulfur oxides. Sulfur oxides are compounds of sulfur and oxygen molecules, as you know. So we have two major sulfur oxides. So one of them is SO2 and one of them is SO3. SO2 is called sulfur dioxide and SO3 is called sulfur trioxide. So sulfur dioxide is the predominant form found in the lower atmosphere. So sulfur in the elemental state are relatively inert and harmless to humans and it is needed to life. But however, the oxides of sulfur are widely recognized air pollutants. So as I said before, SO2 and SO3 are very harmful and basically they consider as air pollutants. So let's say different materials that consist of some sulfur content. So as you see here, sulfur sometimes is written by S-U-L-F-U-R or sometimes it is S-U-L-P-H-U-R. So these are the typical values for sulfur content of different fuels in terms of weight percent dry. So it means that when we say dry, it means that after we remove water content or without considering the water content of the material, we need to consider it as dry, so weight percent dry. So it means that we removed or we exclude water content. So if we divide uh, fuels into different classes, fossil fuels and biomass, for fossil fuels we have coal, oil, natural gas, light fuel oil, heavy fuel oil, and peat, petroleum coke, and for biomass we have wood, straw, and bark. So here's the sulfur content, as you see here, coal has very high sulfur content from 0.2 to 5% sulfur content, oil 1 to 4%, natural gas 0 to 10% and so on. So it means that when we burn or when we combust any of this material due to the, con the sulfur content, this sulfur content is going to be converted to SO2 and then SO3. So it means that this sulfur content material, when we combust them, we're gonna generate more air pollution. So before going to the control of sulfur oxide emission, let's see different forms of sulfur containing material. So here we have oxidation and reduction of sulfur. So reduction means the addition of hydrogen or the removal of oxygen. So when we are adding hydrogen, or when we're removing oxygen, we are dealing with reduction. On the other hand, for oxygen oxidation, when we add oxygen or when we remove hydrogen, we call it an oxidation. So that's the definition of oxidation and reduction. So if we reduce sulfur, it means that we produce hydrogen sulfide because we are adding hydrogen to it. So from elemental sulfur, when we have reduction, we're gonna produce hydrogen sulfide. When sulfur is oxidizes or oxidized, uh, sulfur forms sulfur dioxide, SO2. And then when we have one additional oxidation step, we will produce sulfur trioxide or SO3. So sulfur can also form other oxides, but these are the ones of principal air pollutant interest. So here you can see different forms of it. From left to right, we have oxidation. From right to left, we have reduction. So if you consider this elemental form of sulfur, we have only S. 
if we add hydrogen or if we remove oxygen it means that we have reduction so s if we add hydrogen to it we're going to produce h2s or hydrogen sulfide so it means that we have reduction on the other hand this s if we add oxygen to it we're going to have oxidation so s is going to convert it to so2 or sulfur dioxide if you have one more oxidation step we're going to produce so3 which is sulfur trioxide so from left to right we have oxidation as you see here we remove hydrogen we add oxygen so we have all the way oxidation from left to right and from right to left we remove we are removing oxygen and adding hydrogen so we have reduction from right to left and we have oxidation from left to right and here as you see here so3 when it reacts with water it's going to produce h2so4 or sulfuric acid as you see here so so2 and so3 are the major sulfur oxides so when we are talking about sulfur oxide or sox sox it means that we have so2 and so3 so the sum of so2 and so3 content is called sox or sox